Guys, I'm back. Hey guys, what is up? It's HVL Manga here and welcome back to the YouTube channel. It has been a while since my last video. I think almost a month or so, which I just first up wanted to apologize. I'll talk more a little bit about what's kind of been going on in my life at the end of today's video. So if you're at all interested, stay to the end. But today it is the end of January. I literally don't understand how it's the end of January because literally time flies. So because it's the end of another month, Today I have for you guys, obviously, my manga haul for January 2022. So this month's haul, I want to say I have around maybe a little over 20-ish volumes, so definitely a more reasonable haul compared to last month's 70 volume haul. Regardless, let's not delay, let's get right into it. First, let's touch on my pre-orders this month. So the first pre-order that I have for the month of January, I don't, you know, this one, I don't know why I picked it up. Maybe it's because I'm a bit of a completionist, but that is Demon Slayer Story of Water and Flame. So this is just kind of like a side story to the main, obviously, Demon Story, Demon Story, Demon Slayer timeline. Again, this is just kind of something where I was like, you know what? Demon Slayer is a series that I do enjoy. Is it my favorite thing ever? Definitely not. But it is still kind of a fun series. So I just decided to pick it up. And I will say the art in this side story is actually done by a different artist than the main Demon Slayer story. And truthfully, I like this art a lot better. I kind of wish the artist who did this would have done the rest of Demon Slayer, but uh, you know, what are you gonna do? Because the art in this is really well done. I really like it. I haven't gotten into this yet, but I definitely am planning on it. Okay, so the next manga pre-order that I have this month, I actually thought that volume zero was coming out and not volume 12. But I was mistaken when I walked into Barnes & Noble one day. So that is Toilet Bound Hanukkah-kun Volume 12. Every time that I talk about this series, I always tend to sing its praises. And today's video and showing of Volume 12 is not going to be any different. I love this series. I think it is so unique. And the art style, you know, again, I say it every time. The art style is really what sets the series apart for me. I love how it looks. So much so, in fact, that I went and bought the art book. Don't let the cutesy kind of look of this volume and the series kind of deter you away from reading it. This series gets really dark and something that I can really appreciate. So I'm so glad that I gave this series a shot. I'm not on volume 12 yet. I think I'm a couple of volumes behind, but I really like it. I will say I don't love, this is my one complaint, okay? I don't love the color that they chose for the spine and volume. It looks so kind of nasty. Compared to my other ones, it looks like you didn't drink water for like five days and that's, you get it. <laughs> okay, so the next pre that I picked up this month is a series that I actually am really surprised that I enjoy as much as I do, and that is Free Run Beyond Journey's End Volume 2. So this is a Shonen Sunday title. I actually think it's my first Shonen Sunday title, and this story is just a very interesting take on an adventure story. This series has sold insanely well in Japan and in other, you know, foreign markets. So that's primarily the reason why I picked this up. And I read it, I read volume two, and I enjoyed it even more. I think volume two is starting to finally kind of get into the main plot and premise of the series, which I'm really excited about. This is just a very nice, different change of pace. I will say there are a lot of time skips in this story, so if time skips aren't really your thing, just be aware of that. But even with the time skips, something that I'm maybe not super used to, I do really enjoy this read. I really encourage you guys to give it a shot, especially if you kind of like an adventure story, but maybe like a different take on the story. Okay, so the next pre-order that I have this month is a series that never misses. I need, if you haven't given the series a shot yet because you think it's weird, get that out of your mind because it's, it's so good. And that is Beastars Volume 16. I love Beastars. I think it's so good. A lot of people say, oh, I forgot exactly what volume around, but maybe from volumes 12 to 14, the series kind of declines. To me, it really hasn't because I think in these later volumes, you learn more about the world and the environment that they live in. And as someone who really appreciates world building, that's kind of something that I really value. So I've actually been really enjoying these last couple volumes. You learn more about Legoshi as a character, kind of his history, his family tree, all that sort of stuff. And I read these as soon as I get them. So Beastars volume 16, I read it. It's good. You should read it too. Talking about another series that never misses, I have Hell's Paradise volume 12. Guys, if you are sleeping on Hell's Paradise, now is the time. This series has one more volume and then we're done and I'm so excited yet nervous for the last volume, I'm not gonna lie. Volume 12 here, I read it as soon as I got it and it really 
surprised me. There was a lot more deaths than I thought there was gonna be. Like, throughout the entire series, there was, like, some death, nothing too crazy, nothing too, like, monumental to the series. But Volume 12 really said, you want death? Here you go. <laughs> Again, this series ends at Volume 13. It's also coming out with an anime relatively soon, which I don't watch a whole lot of anime, but dang it, I'm excited for that one because I think they're gonna kill it. So Hell's Paradise Volume 12, so good. I love this series. I'm so excited yet nervous for volume 13. Okay, so this last volume, before I show the cover, I just wanted to do a little bit of a warning, a little bit of a spoiler warning. If you are reading Sweat and Soap and you have not seen volume 11's cover, you don't know how it ends, you don't know anything of the sort, please skip to this timestamp because volume 11's cover is a spoiler. Okay, so to everyone who doesn't care or knows how it ends, I have Sweat and Soap volume 11. This volume got me so in my feels, unlike any other manga series that I have ever read. Literally reading this last volume, it was like 1.30 in the morning, probably way too late for me to be reading. I should have been at bed at that point, but I was reading this volume and I was audibly like, just like saying things. Like I was like, oh, like that's so cute. Or just like all that sort I was literally audibly making reactions to this because it was that good. If you want to know how to end a manga series, people, this is how you do it. I think it wrapped everything up so nice. Just, it's so good. If you want a really good romance series about a healthy relationship and like people actually talking through their feelings, this is for you because this was so good. I definitely would say this is for an older audience. So if you're younger, I wouldn't recommend this for you specifically, but to my older audience, read it. Okay, so the next manga pre-order that I have this month is one that I always love to pick up, and that is Yomushi Petal Volume 19. You guys have probably heard me talking about this series and a lot of other people talking about it, which makes me so happy. It is such a good sports manga focused on cycling. Cycling was kind of a concept I didn't think I'd be able to get super into when I first like picked up a couple volumes, but then I started reading it, and wow, this series has me hype unlike any other series that I've ever read. This was one of the series that really got me into sports manga. Some of these volumes are going out of stock and then going into out of print. So if you're looking to get into the series, start picking it up now. Some of the volumes are already kind of expensive, so do just be aware of that. But I promise you, it's worth it. The series is so good. Okay, next moving on, the next pre-order that I have this month is Soul Eater in the Perfect Edition Volume 5. So Soul Eater is actually a series that I picked up Last month, I read the first, I think, two volumes, I want to say, in these Perfect Editions, and I'm actually really enjoying it. Soul Eater's kind of one of those very highly acclaimed, almost like staple in the collection. It's just very well regarded, and especially I've heard the manga ending is different than the anime, and apparently much better than the anime, so I'm like, you know what, I'm just gonna stick with the manga. Regardless, very excited to pick up another one of these volumes. I will say they print these Perfect Editions, like, quick. Like, I think volume six in this, it's coming, you know, end of February, so it's like the turnaround time for these are pretty quick, which I can really appreciate. So yeah, Soul Eater and the Perfect Edition Volume 5. And the last pre-order that I have this month is probably the one that I was the most excited about. I've heard so many good things about this series, and when I saw that it was getting an English print, I was literally so excited. I, I literally even picked up, before I knew it was getting an English print, I picked up Volume 1 in Japanese just because I was so excited for it. <laughs> that is... Record of Ragnarok Volume 1. Guys, this volume was so much fun. It's, it was so much fun. So essentially, Record of Ragnarok follows the story where the gods are like, hey, you know what? Let's kill all the humans. We're in a silly, goofy mood. But then someone, a Valkyrie, steps up and is like, hey, you know what? Maybe let's not. Let's have a test. Let's have, you know, the gods' greatest warriors fight humanity's greatest warriors and see who wins. And it's just, it's so much fun. It's not like super deep or like I'm gonna really have life takeaways in this story. The art in this series is also really really good. I have really enjoyed the artwork and I'm also definitely kind of like a mythology nerd. Like I was the Percy Jackson kid in school. Okay, you know, interpret that as you will. <laughs> but I am so excited for Record of Ragnarok. I really enjoyed this first volume. Okay, so those were all of my pre-orders for this month. Definitely a good chunk. January was kind of heavier for pre-orders, but next moving on, let's go into some other manga that I picked up this month. So the first volume that I picked up, maybe not actually the first volume, but the first volume I'm going to show you uh, is Yona of the Dawn Volume 1. So I actually posted a picture of me picking this up on my Instagram story. 
And the amount of comments that I got and like DMs saying like, I'm really surprised you picked that up was astronomical. <laughs> so this is a shoujo manga, which is actually the only shoujo currently in my collection. I don't have any other shoujo, um, but I picked this up primarily because I've heard from so many people one, it's just really good, and two, if you maybe don't necessarily love shoujo titles, this is the shoujo for you, because there's like, I don't know, action and fighting. I'm not entirely sure, you know, I don't know a whole lot about this series, but it was just one of those things where it's like, you know what, I've heard good things, it seems like it'd be potentially something that I'd enjoy, so we're just gonna give it a shot. Okay, so the next manga that I picked up this month is again the completionist side of me. <laughs> that is the After School Hanukkah-kun. Again, this is just a side story to the main Toilet Bound series. And again, I'm a completionist, so I'm gonna pick this up. I haven't read this yet. I think I want to read this after I'm caught up to volume 12. Very excited to have this volume. I hope that I like it. I'm sure that I will. Okay, so the next volume of manga that I picked up this month is one that I had my eye on for a while. You know, always meant to pick up, just never really did, never had much initiative to, and the volumes do kind of go in and out of stock. We all know the deal. That is Pluto by Urusawa and Tezuka. Um, but I'm very excited to have this volume. Again, I haven't read this yet, um, but I am excited to get into it because again, Urusawa and Tezuka, huge names in the industry, so I'm very excited to get into it. I've heard nothing but good things, and it's just another thing to add to my Urusawa collection. Okay, so the next two volumes of manga that I picked up this month are ones that I'm so excited to have picked up because I'm trying to freaking complete this series. Everyone collecting this series knows exactly what I'm talking about. So I picked up volumes 11 and 12 of Slam Dunk. These volumes kind of randomly came back in stock on Barnes & Noble, and you guys are amazing because so many of you guys DM'd me being like, dude, Check out Barnes & Noble right now. They have some volumes of Slam Dunk in stock, and these were some two volumes that I was missing. So obviously, I scooped them up. Slam Dunk is not easy to come by these days. So with these two volumes, I am just that much closer to completing this series. I'm still missing a lot of the earlier volumes, which is definitely a bummer, because how am I supposed to start reading it? Very excited to have these volumes. Hopefully, more keep coming back in stock so I can actually read it. <laughs> okay, so continuing to talk about series that I freaking need to complete, <laughs> that is Vagabond in the Viz Big Editions volumes 8 and 10. These were two also that were just in stock on Barnes & Noble, so I decided to take advantage of that. Vagabond is a series that I've become a lot more intentional with collecting recently. It was just kind of like, why was I like dragging my feet on the series because I really enjoy it. So now I'm only missing volumes 5 and 9, which are arguably the most out of stock volumes. <sighs> so far so and I'm not about to pay a hundred dollars each for those volumes so I'm definitely taking my time with this series this is just a really good samurai series with insane art if you haven't seen it yet and you are a seinen, seinen enjoyer <laughs> I definitely would recommend that you guys give this a shot okay so the next volume of manga that I picked up is actually in Japanese I picked up Berserk volume 41 in the singles in Japanese I guess this is the last volume written by Kentaro Miura. It's, it's, it's just such a tragic loss, but I'm very excited to have this. Definitely add to my Berserk Shrine. Um, but yeah, Berserk Volume 41 in Japanese. Very glad to have this. Okay, so the last manga that I have for you guys today, I picked up more volumes of The Witch and the Beast. So I actually picked up volumes three through seven. So The Witch and the Beast was a series that I picked up the first two volumes last month's haul. Really enjoyed the first two volumes. It's just a very, like, truly dark, fantasy series and I really enjoy it and the artwork is also insane like a lot better than I expected this series is just so much fun I really enjoy it if you're looking for a dark fantasy series definitely give this a shot I highly recommend it I will say one of my biggest problems with this series is it seems like this series in particular is subject to having really poor quality releases in the sense of the spines are nicked up like, the cut of the cover doesn't go all the way to the end of the manga panels. It's just, I don't exactly know what's going on with Kadansha. I actually went on an entire rant on my Instagram story when I went home and picked up one of these volumes because it was just in such poor condition. Even with that being said, though, even though the quality of these, honestly, kind of suck, <laughs> um, the story inside is really good. I definitely recommend it. Okay, so now I'm going to go into not manga, but it is still related, so kind of art books and also a guidebook. So this guidebook, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know why, I definitely thought it was an art book when I bought it, but then I bought it and, you know, received it and looked in it and I'm like, ain't no way this is an art book. Ain't no way, which is not, it's a guidebook, which I'm honestly okay with, I'm not mad about in any way. Um, but anyways, so I picked up the 
Doro Hidoro guidebook in Japanese. I love Doro Hidoro. It's one of my favorite series. It's just really fun, really gritty, and it's just, I love how it's written by a female mangaka. Okay, I'm gonna be that person. I just really enjoy this series. It's a lot of fun. Okay, so now getting into art books, I actually picked up two art books this month. The first one that I picked up is the, uh, the Art of Naruto um, art book. So this is a, obviously, Naruto art book. This is the OG Naruto as well, so not it doesn't include art from Shippuden, but it just has, you know, art on a bigger format, which is something that I really appreciate. A lot of them are in color. It's just, art books are just fun to flip through and look at. I don't even know. And it's just a really nice hardcover book, which I really enjoy. So, very excited to have this and to add it to my Naruto shrine because that shrine is ever-growing. <laughs> okay, so the last thing and the last art book that I have to show you guys today is an art book that I've wanted for so long, and I'm so glad that I finally have it because it is so cool, the release is so nice, and it just looks so good on the shelf. That is the Full Metal Alchemist art book, the complete art book. <sighs> I love this art book. It looks so good. The quality is so nice. It's like a nice hardcover, and it has just really nice kind of like shiny lettering and like engraving in the back. This, this art book don't miss. I wish all art books were this nice. Full Metal Alchemist is my third favorite anime and manga of all time, so getting this just kind of made sense. I have wanted this for literally so long, and I finally got it, which I'm so excited about. If you are a Full Metal Alchemist fan, and you want to support, I guess, the creator and the industry in a different way, the art book is definitely the way to go because it looks so nice. I'm in love with it. I will literally flip through this for a very long time because it's just that good. So guys, that was January's manga haul. Thank you so much for watching. I also said in the beginning that I'd give you a little bit of context as to where I've been. So here's that context. So essentially, January has been an insane month for me. Absolutely insane. So this month I've been going through a lot of transition. All good things. Don't worry. Um, started my last semester of university, which is crazy. Taking 18 credits, which is a full semester load. So I'm very busy with school. And also I started a new job. So I had to wrap up stuff at my old job, make sure that I'm leaving them well and also transition into my new position and like onboarding and learning everything and it just, switching jobs is stressful. <laughs> so this past month again, it's been a lot of very much transitional stuff. So I just wanted to apologize for the lack of content and the lack of videos, but I am back. I've kind of settled into somewhat of a normal routine in a way. So I'm getting definitely a little bit more used to that. So content will become much more regular and I just wanted to apologize for the break that I took without kind of any mention, I do really apologize that. I will say, uh, make sure to follow me on Instagram at hvlmanga because I definitely post all the time there, like all the time. So if you want more of me and my content and my random Instagram ranting stories, definitely follow me there. I hope you guys are having a great day and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Guys, I appreciate you, thank you, and I'll see ya. Bye guys.